Hello everyone, this is Aida Qolami from Agreement Soft Research Company and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to uh, calculate p-value using Excel. Actually, I'm going a little more than that. So um, basically what Excel does is uh, just this step number four in here. So as you can see, there are three steps behind it and uh, here I want you to learn these three steps and then uh, so that you can actually use p-value um, use uh, using this function in Excel that calculates p-value. So let's jump into it. Uh, as you can see the first step here is to define your hypothesis. So null and alternative hypothesis if you don't know, is two hypotheses that you should have when you want to make decisions uh, using statistics. So the null hypothesis is that one which you want to collect evidence against that. So uh, you want to prove it's wrong. If you succeed, you can neglect the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. But if you don't, you don't have any uh, significant evidence to reject the null hypothesis and maybe you can um, accept it or make uh, more um, research or anything else. So that's the first step actually. I will uh, explain it more how to define your hypothesis using an example in, um, in um, next steps. After that, you have to define your level of significance. So this level of significance or alpha is very important as you can make decision in the fifth steps uh, based on this level of significance. So after you calculate p-value, you want to compare it uh, to the level of significance and decide if the p-value you have calculated is um, smaller than level of significance, it means that you can reject the null hypothesis. So you succeed. So you have enough evidence to prove it's wrong. But if your p-value is bigger than level of significance, it means that you don't have uh, enough evidence to prove it's wrong and you cannot reject the null hypothesis. So in the third step you want to define desired test statistics and then of course compute it. So um, maybe you have to um, read more about this desire to st statistic i want to explain this example in this video based on t-test but um we have a lot of uh test statistics like z-test or uh chi-test uh, if i'm not wrong or if i'm not um per pronouncing it wrong so we have uh, all these other statistics that you want to uh read about them and then decide to which one to um, select and then using the formula of these uh, statistics you want to compute them so here i'm using t-test and the formula for t-test is right here so i want to calculate my t my t statistic using this formula here then after that you need to define um you need to calculate the p-value so this is actually what excel can do for you so this uh this one has a function uh named tdist tdist actually there there are a lot of different function tdist two tail two tail uh, two tail student t distribution or t distribution returns the left tailed stu uh, student t distribution 
or any other function. So you want to use these functions to calculate p-value. And this p-value, so what Excel does here is that it actually goes to those sheets um, that has degree of freedom and then has, um, um, say, yeah, degree of freedom and the level of significance and then um, you can find your p-value if I'm not wrong yeah the, those are uh, sheets and um, instead of going through those sheets you can use Excel to calculate p-value then you can decide so if you, you, you make a comparison between p-value and alpha and level of significance then you can decide whether to accept the null hypothesis or reject them. So let's go through an example here. So as you can see, I have precipitation data right here. And <clears throat> I have precipitation data for one month. So this is actually measured data. This is the sample data. So uh, I want to check. So maybe this is the, the problem. I want to check uh, if the uh, average of precipitation in months in my study area is uh, actually is is fifty or not. So that's the null hypothesis. So I want to check if the precipitation average value, so I have this null hypothesis that I want to reject or accept. So I say that average precipitation in uh, my study area is 50. So there's a tip right here. No hypothesis should always um, bring an equal statement. So um, average is 50 or average is 100 or anything. Then in my alternative hypothesis, I want to say that uh, average of precipitation <coughs> is bigger than 50. So I want to see if I can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis or not. So that's the first step here. So I defined my hypothesis. Then what I want to do next is to define my level of significance. So the level of significance which I'm um, working with here is, so let's, make an alpha sign here so alpha is is point uh, zero 0.05 this is the second step and then define desired test statistic so as i mentioned before i want to use uh, T student distribution. So my my uh, test statistic is T statistic. So now I want to calculate the T statistic for my uh, test. So as you can see, it wants the X bar or what what is this X bar? This X bar is the average of data of my sample. So this is the major data. This is the sample data. I want to calculate the average of this um, data. So I want to have x bar or average or I can say maybe um, sample average 
So my sample average is average of this data set. So then I want the null hypothesis average. So what I have hypothesized. So this is the null hypothesis and the mu or average for null hypothesis is, is 50. So the null average is 50. What else do I need? So I need the standard deviation of uh, this data set also. So I want standard deviation and I use this um, function, built-in function, function in, in Excel, estimates the standard deviation based on sample. So I want, I have a sample also. So this is my sample. Close the parenthesis, and this is my standard deviation. And then the square root of n. So n is the number of uh, sample population. So I have this n. n is uh, 29. So the number of data in my sample is 29. And then I go for calculating the t statistic. So what I want to do is to um, sample average minus null average in parentheses and then divided by standard deviation uh, divided by square root of 29 and then close the other parentheses and that's it. So my T statistic here is 4.4. Uh, what I will do is to go through the next step. What is the next step? Calculate p-value. So for calculating p-value, I use Excel, as I said before. And here there's a tip because, uh, so I, I go for T distance. So I want to t-test right-tailed, so returns the right-tailed student's distribution. I want the x, so this x is t-statistic that you have calculated. I select it, then I go for degree of freedom. So degree of freedom is n minus 1. So I go for n minus 1. Then I close all the parameters, and this is my p-value. So you can see that, actually, if I click on that, if I uh, bring the value only, and you can see here is very low, and it's so much lower than the alpha, and you can obviously say that you can uh, reject the null hypothesis. So it's not uh, the average of this data set is not equal to 50 and it's more than 50. So we could reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. So I guess that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to give this video a thumb up and subscribe to Agreements of Channel. I will see you in the next video and bye.